here in our easy seated position. We're going to bring the palms out to the side. Inhale to reach. Again, remember when you get about shoulder height, lift from the ribs, lift the chest. So we're really lengthening the spine. Exhale, push the arms out, create your space here, lengthen. Inhale to reach. This time on your exhale, we're going to twist to the right. Bring that right hand all the way behind to support the back. And exhale, we're pulling that right shoulder back behind us. So we're not cranking our necks. We're really moving from the hip to the shoulder. And take a few breaths here. Settling in, settling down. Deepening into this stretch. Releasing that low back and spine. And on your next exhale, release your twist coming back center. Inhale to reach. Exhale, bringing hands to the heart. Inhale to reach. Exhale, twisting to the left, bringing that right hand to the left knee and the left hand right behind the spine. Again, pulling the left shoulder to twist, your right hand to assist. So your head kind of is just moving with your shoulders. And breathe here. On your next exhale, release your twist back center and reach. Exhale, bringing hands to the heart. Wonderful. So we've really started to bring in the core. We're gonna to start to move into the legs. So I'm gonna turn my body here and you can just extend your legs out into Dandasana. So sitting up nice and tall, you can brace yourself, bringing the fingertips right behind the hips. And we're not gripping here. We wanna create a little tense. So we're lifting the chest. We're flexing the feet, staying engaged. Take a few cycles of breath here. Dropping the shoulders. On your next inhale, palms up towards the sky and reach. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale to reach. Exhale, forward fold. If you can bring the hands all the way to the toes or the outsides of the feet, drop the neck, bringing it all the way to the chin and rest here. As you exhale, releasing deeper into the stretch. So we're, wherever we're at today, if you're up here at the knees, the shins, the ankles, wherever we may be. We'll take one more breath here, just softly opening up the hamstrings. And on your next inhale, lengthen the spine, reach all the way up, and exhale, bringing hands to the heart. On your next inhale, we're gonna bring that right leg in. We're gonna cross it over that left knee. Again, find your grounded stance. So anytime that we're shifting here, you may need to again, move that fleshy out of the way, nice and grounded. Inhale to reach. On your exhale, twisting right. Bring that right hand right behind the, the tailbone, assisting your spine, and left hand comes down outside the knee. We'll take a couple of breaths here, keeping that left leg strong and engaged. So we're flexing through the left foot and turning our gaze to look behind us. Take one more cycle of breath here, lengthening the spine as we inhale and deepening our twist on the exhale. On your next exhale, release your bind, coming back center, palms up to the sky, Inhale to reach, exhale, send the right heel out, and hands come to the heart. Beautiful. Bringing the left foot in, crossing it over that right knee, grounding the hips. Palms up to the sky, inhale to reach, and exhale to twist. Breathe here, nice and strong, steady breaths. So you really want to try to create length in your inhales. And as you exhale, really pull that belly button to the spine, creating more space for your twist, going a little bit deeper. And on your next exhale, releasing your twist back to center, 
palms up, inhale to reach, exhale, hands come to the heart, and left leg back out to center. Wonderful. So I'm going to uh, bend the knees, bringing them over to one side, and we're going to shift our bodies into our tabletop position. Moving into our tabletop, so find a nice grounded stance here, neck is neutral, reaching the crown of the head to the front of the room. So from here in your tabletop position, drop the belly, lift the tail, roll the shoulders back, and look up for your cow. Exhale, round the spine, push into the mat, tuck the chin all the way to the chest. Flow here twice more. Really pulling that tailbone in so the low back gets a nice arch as well. Last one here, really strong arms into your cat. Again, pulling the belly button to the spine and then coming back to your neutral tabletop position. So from here, we're gonna send the hips back, reaching the hands forward into our active child's pose. Take a breath here, just settling in. Resting that low back and sending the hips back further. Strong arms here, so we really are pushing through the shoulders, creating length from the fingers to the tailbone. And on your next inhale, pushing through the balls of the feet, bringing the tailbone up to the sky for your downward facing dog. And pedal out the heels, or just bending the knees, shifting the hips. And we'll take a moment here to engage into our downward dog. We want to make sure that our ears are within our biceps and that we're not allowing the whole neck space and the chest to drop down into our downward dog. We want to stay strong and lengthening here. Taking a strong bend in the knees, looking up through the hands. On your next inhale, walk, hop, or jump to your forward fold. Bringing the feet hip distance apart. Inhale to halfway lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale. Deep in your fold. Let's take a moment here to just allow our necks to decompress for a moment. So you can take a couple options. You can keep the legs strong and straight for a nice deep hamstring stretch. If you can hook the elbows behind the shins with the fingertips behind the heels. Holding your body here. And as you exhale, really just releasing, focusing your breath in that space. So as you exhale, you're really releasing. Allowing those vertebrae to separate a bit. You can also take opposite elbows, creating that pendulum. I always seem to get a bit of decompression when I do this. And on your next exhale, releasing your bind and bringing your palms to your shins. Inhale to halfway lift, lengthening the spine. Exhale one more time, deepening this fold. Taking a strong bend in the knees, arms out wide. Inhale all the way up. Tucking in the tailbone, exhale, bringing hands to the heart. And finding Tadasana. So from here in Tadasana, we're just going to move into our side body stretches. So I'll go ahead and come where you can see me. Here we go. So our palms are strong. We want to first stabilize, make sure we're grounded in our legs. I always like to lift my toes and roll along the balls of my feet. Roll the inner thigh to the front of the room and lock down into your mat. Lift the chest, engage the core. Doesn't mean um, contract your abs the whole time, but engage it, keeping it lifted, keeping that uh, tummy pulled in. So as you exhale, you really squeeze the belly button in towards the spine. Shoulders roll back, nice and strong here. start integrating some movement into our Tadasana. So as we inhale, take our gaze all the way up with our hands and exhale, arms out wide, bringing your gaze all the way down. We'll do this twice more. Inhale to reach. One more time. Really allow your gaze, your chin to come all the way up, opening the throat. And as you exhale, Pulling the chin into the chest, creating space in the back of the neck. On your next inhale to reach, we're going to grab that left wrist, push the left palm up towards the sky. So we're first, we're inhale, we're going to lengthen, 
And then as we exhale, hinge the hips towards the right. So if we're just hinging a little bit, that's okay. If you wanna come all the way down for a big side body stretch, that's fine too. So wherever we're at today, concentrating here on in, as you inhale, pushing through the palm. So you're really stretching through that armpit, shoulder, side body, and low back. And on your next inhale, coming all the way up, center and reach. I'm running out of ceiling space. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Inhale to reach. Opening the right side body, so gripping that right wrist, pushing that palm up towards the sky, and hinging at the hips on your exhale. You want to deepen a little bit further, maybe turning the chest up towards the sky. We'll take one more breath here. Inhale to center and reach. And exhale, hands to the heart. Excellent. Coming into um, a slight back bend here. So inhale to reach. Taking a mudra if you'd like, prayer hands, or interlacing your fingertips. And as you exhale, you can draw, start to draw the body back, pulling. You don't want to just drop back or bend in your back. You really want to reach with the fingers. So maybe if you're starting with hands at the heart and drop the net back and then extend the arms all the way out. If this is too much for you to go into a full back standing back bend, you can always bring those hands right behind the tailbone, pulling the elbows together to assist your low back and really give a good chest expansion here. So whatever feels best for you. On your next inhale, far reaching. And exhale, hands to the heart. We'll start moving into our warrior flow, staying focused on our breath. So staying in that mindful moment, closing your eyes from time to time to become aware of your body, you know, really integrating each pose as we move through them. Beginners classes, I was telling them, you know, oftentimes it's good to slow down and hold an asana for an extra cycle of breath so you can really pull in the benefits of that pose. We're gonna inhale and reach. First, stepping back with your left foot, bringing you into a right warrior one. Send your hips back a slight bit. Maybe scoop them in under, tucking in the tail, and push into the back heel. We want to keep the back leg as engaged as the front leg. So finding a center of balance here. And we'll start to flow with our breath. Inhale to lengthen and reach. Exhale, pulling the elbows back behind you squeezing the shoulder blades together. But keep those elbows up high so we're staying in line with our shoulders. Beautiful. Inhale to reach. Exhale to open. Inhale to reach. Exhale to open. We'll do this one more time. Nice and strong reach here. Really pull, draw those elbows back. Inhale to reach. This time we're going to turn our palms out. Exhale, bring those hands all the way behind your back and create a bind. If it's too much to interlace the fingers here, that's totally fine. You can grab opposite elbows, wrists, fingertips, or use a strap or a belt or a towel. Anything can be used here. We're going to take a few breaths here, standing in our warrior one. Again, as you inhale, lift the chest and draw the fingertips down towards your heels. And on your next exhale, hinging at the hips, coming all the way forward into your humble warrior. And take a few breaths here. So let's become aware of this asana here. If we're really imbalanced and we're finding a lot of shake, step one of your feet, preferably the back one, over just a little bit. So you're on skis. You're standing on uh, train tracks and not, um, and not in line, not on a tightrope. And that'll help widen your balance, give you a little bit more room to come inside that thigh and start drawing the crown of the head towards your mat. And breathe here. On your next exhale, release your bind, slowly drawing the fingertips all the way in front of the face and back up to a far reaching warrior one. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Inhale to reach. Exhale, open up to your warrior two. Widen your stance here. Again, you can stay on your train tracks, 
but try to get really deep into that front lunge. And again, push, take a moment to push into that back leg. So we're really squared and centered and balanced here. Looking over the front fingers, rolling the palms up towards the sky. Inhale to reverse. So we don't want to come all the way back where we're coming out of our lunge. So stay deep in your lunge, lift through the side body. We don't want to cinch here, we want to lift and reach. So finding space, wherever that might be. And on your next exhale, find your warrior two. And we're going to flow with breath there. So we'll inhale, reverse. And exhale, warrior two. One last time here. On your next inhale, we'll drop that um, front forearm down onto that knee. Exhale, bringing the left hand all the way over. If you're an upper level, you want to um, take this up a notch. Bring that right hand all the way down to your mat for an extended side angle. Breathe here. Again, just take a moment to settle in. Become aware of any sensations or maybe some resistance we might be feeling. On your next inhale, keeping that core strong and engaged, come all the way back to your warrior two. Inhale, bringing both palms forward and pivoting the back foot, coming back into your warrior one. On your next inhale, you're going to step into that right leg and exhale into Tadasana. Excellent. Inhale to reach. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Let the head drop out completely. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, deep in your fold. Take a strong bend in the knees, arms out wide. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale to reach. Stepping back this time with, I'm sorry, with the right foot. Bringing you into your left warrior. So again, find that strong alignment where we're pushing into the back heel, we're tucking in the tailbone, we're keeping our hips squared and centered. So if you start to turn open, pull that hip, pull that right hip forward and stay really strong and balanced in our first warrior. Inhale to reach and lengthen through the side body. Exhale, draw the elbows back, opening the chest. Squeezing the shoulder blades together like we're trying to hold that pencil in between our blades. Inhale to reach. Flow with your breath here. Keeping that rhythm. We'll do this twice more. Really just bringing in all that extra energy. Time we're going to inhale and reach. Turning the palms out. Exhale, create that bind. Whatever works best for you behind the back. Grip and open the chest. Ground here, a couple of breaths. Inhale to lift the chest, lifting the sternum. Exhale, drawing the fingers down towards your heels. On your next inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hinge forward, dropping into that humble warrior. I can already see that I need to widen my stance back onto my train tracks. And then come down inside that thigh. Take a few breaths here again as you exhale, really focusing on drawing the crown of your head down towards your mat. Hmm, I'm not sure. Alexa, stop playing. She keeps talking. On your next exhale, we're going to release our bind here and slowly bring the arms all the way in front and back to our far-reaching warrior one. Exhale, bringing hands to the heart. Excellent. Inhale to reach. Exhale, shift your hips to the side of the mat and widen your stance for your warrior two. Get deep in that lunge. Push into the back edge of the back foot and our gaze is over the fingertips. Inhale, rotating the palms up towards the sky, and reverse. 
Again, focusing on lifting through that side body, opening the armpit, stretching that shoulder, lifting the chest towards the ceiling. So we really just don't want to drop into a hunch. We really want to stay lifted. Exhale, back to your warrior two. Let's flow with breath here. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. One more time in our nice reverse flow. Beautiful. On your next inhale, drop that forearm and move into your supported side angle or again, coming all the way down for an extended side angle. Breathe here. Nice and strong here. On your next inhale, engaging the core and coming all the way back to your warrior two. Inhale, pivoting the back foot into your warrior one. Exhale, shifting the weight into your left leg, coming back into Tadasana. Inhale to reach. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift. And exhale, deep in. Take a moment here to grab opposite elbows and shift the hips from side to side, swaying the upper body. Maybe take a moment here to shake out the neck, shake the head yes, and shake the head no. Maybe taking a bend in each knee. On your next inhale, interlace your fingertips. Here we're still in our forward fold. Interlace your fingertips and place them right behind the head, not on the neck, but the base of the skull. So finding the base of the skull here, bring your elbows in. What we're gonna do is on your next inhale, straighten that left leg, take a nice bend in the right leg, and we're gonna twist towards the left. If you can hook your elbow outside that left knee, beautiful. But find a nice deep stretch here. You'll feel it all the way up in the glute. So take a few moments to just breathe into this stretch. And then on your next exhale, release back to center. Release the palms all the way down. We're going to inhale to halfway lift. Lengthen the spine. Reach the crown of the head to the front of the room. Exhale, deep in your fold. We're going to do that on the right side. So interlacing those fingertips, placing them at the base of the skull, straightening the right leg, and take a strong bend in that left knee. On your next inhale, twist to the right. If you can bring this elbow all the way outside the knee, beautiful. And breathe here. So if it doesn't come outside the knee, you're obviously going to be inside the knee, and that's fine too. So wherever we're at in that stretch today, beautiful inversion, great for the heart. We'll take one more cycle of breath here. And on your next exhale, releasing back to center, releasing your bind. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deep in your fold. Take a strong bend in the knees, arms out wide. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So I'm going to come back center here so that you guys can see me. Um, but we're going to start in a wide-legged stance. So just find however wide you like today, wherever your five-pointed star is. Inhale to reach into your star. Reach nice and strong here. We're going to hang out in our five-pointed star for a second. So find some movement, maybe opening that side body a little bit. Maybe coming up on the tippy toes. Just really grounding in our stance. Because maybe this is too much. Maybe this is too much on our shins and we want to come in a little bit. Maybe this is where we're at today. And shift the hips and the shoulders. Inhale, really lengthen through the side body. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Turning the toes out to the sides of the mat, or the edges of the mat. Exhale, drop into your goddess. Excellent. Flow with breath here. Inhale, five-pointed star. Exhale to lower. Inhale.
inhale to reach. Exhale to lower. We're going to do this three more times, so flow with your own breath here. Really lengthening and reaching on your star, and really sink down. Keep that tailbone tucked in in your squat. Beautiful. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, bringing hands to the heart. Wonderful. Um, pivoting our, oops, I'm falling over. Pivoting our left toes to face the right. So we're shifting our bodies. There you go. Inhale to reach. Exhale, forward fold. If you need to take a micro bend in that front knee, please do. And bring the chin all the way to the chest. Here in our pyramid pose. And just take a couple of breaths here, really opening into that front leg. If you want, you can start lifting the toes, maybe sending the hips back a little bit, getting a nice deeper stretch into that hamstring. Beautiful. We're going to pivot our back toes all the way to the side of our mat, prepping for our triangle pose. Bringing our right hand inside the foot, grounding into the mat. Inhale to open that left arm, turning our chin and our gaze up to the sky. Deep stretch. So you can see here how different transitions are going to give a different sensation into each asana. So we typically come down into our triangle. Whereas now we're coming up into our triangle. So we'll take one more cycle of breath here, really reaching for that ceiling. And as you exhale, bring that left hand all the way down to the mat. Ground here. Inhale, open the right hand to the side. Triangle twist, opening the outer uh, parts of that hamstring and glute. One more cycle of breath here. Again, really reaching for that ceiling. And as you exhale, bringing the palms back to the mat, we're going to walk our hands to center and pivot our right toes forward. Forward fold, wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthening the spine. Exhale, deep in your fold. Walking the hands to the left side, shifting the left toes forward. So we're already in our prep for triangle. We're going to brace our left palm flat inside the foot. Inhale, open that right hand up to the sky, and our gaze comes up to the right. Breathe here, nice and strong. One more breath cycle here. Inhale, really reaching for that ceiling. Exhale, right hand comes to the mat. Grounds next to our foot. Left hand, inhale, reaching for the sky, triangle twist on the left. Keeping strong here, one more cycle of breath. And then on your exhale, bringing that left foot to center the front foot. Pivoting your back toes all the way forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine here, reach the crown of the head to the front of your room. And exhale, deepen into your pyramid pose. Again, if you need to take a micro bend in that front knee, or you want to lift the toes from the mat and play here a bit and get a deeper stretch. Using that exhale and allowing the body to drop closer towards that thigh, really feeling that stretch. On your next inhale, walking your hands to the front of the mat, just in front of that left foot. Take a nice bend in that left foot and bring that right foot to follow. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, deepen your bend. Take a strong bend in the knees. Arms out wide. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, bringing hands to the heart. Excellent. Let's see where we are. Okay. Inhale to reach. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deep in your bend. Grounding both hands down on the mat. We're going to step back with the left foot, bringing you into your runner's lunge. Find a really good alignment here. We want to make sure that that front knee 
is straight in alignment with our ankle or behind it. We never want to go too far forward. And um, while we're here, engage that back leg. So make sure that back leg is fully engaged, pushing through the heel. So we're not just hanging down in our hip space. We're really engaging here. And then you can drop that knee down. So you know that you're already in a full stretch for that um, soda. And we'll just take a couple of breaths here in our low lunge. And on your next exhale, shift the hips back, bringing you into a half split. Again, just nice deep leg stretch here. On your next inhale, shifting the body back into your low lunge. On your exhale, pulling that heel, the right heel into your pelvic region, setting into your uh, supported pigeon. So here in your supported pigeon, that toe is going to be pointed back behind you, and we're going to pull the right hip back, left hip forward. So we know that we're really grounded in our hip space here. Lift the chest nice and strong. Exhale, walking the hands all the way down and resting the head. Take a few breaths here, really settling into this asana. Most of the benefits you're going to get here are opening that hip space with your breath. So exhale, releasing any tension in the feet, releasing any tension in the shins and the thighs, and really allowing the body to settle into that hip. If you want to activate that back leg and roll on the ball of the foot to deepen that stretch in the hip area, I encourage you to do that as well. Or just stay restful. Take one more cycle of breath here. On your next inhale, grounding your palms into the mat, tucking the back toes, pushing strong arms here into the mat. Inhale to lift into that runner's lunge. It's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. We'll keep doing that. On your next inhale, stepping back into plank. Exhale, heart to the mat. Inhale, upward facing dog. Tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Taking a strong bend in the knees, looking up through the hands. Walk, hopper, step, forward fold. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Monkey pose, halfway lift. And exhale to deepen your fold. Grounding the hands into the mat, this time stepping back with your right foot, bringing you into your right runner's lunge. Again, taking a moment here to really ground into that foundation. So really extending that right leg forward and making sure that knee is in alignment. Once you find your high runner's lunge, you can drop that knee, point the toes behind you into your low lunge. You can always start to slide that back knee back further for a deeper stretch. Take a few breaths here. And on your next exhale, grounding the palms into the mat, pulling the left heel into the pelvic region and setting in for your pigeon on the left. Toes pointed back behind you. Inhale to lift the chest and exhale to walk the hands down and allow the forehead to rest. So we want to make sure that we're not sitting on our heel, that we're really just um, evenly coming down into the top of our right thigh and the left glute. So maybe if this is um, not really comfortable or you can't get all the way down in this spot, you can use some blocks to rest on in any empty space between you and the mat. Taking a couple more breaths here, releasing, again reminding ourselves, becoming aware of our bodies. Are we flexing our feet? Are we squeezing our toes? You know, are we grinding our, our knees? Whatever we might be doing, really focusing on letting go. Maybe even tucking the back toes again and rolling on that hip, adding a little extra sensation. On your next inhale, bringing hands to the mat. Here we try again. Activate that back leg, strong arms push into the mat and bring you back into that high lunge. Inhale, stepping back into your plank. 
Exhale, heart to the mat. And inhale, upward facing dog. Tucking the toes and sending the hips back for downward dog. And pedaling off the heels. Again, making sure our chest isn't collapsing here in our down dog. We're keeping those arms strong. We're, sh we're lengthening through our shoulders. So really feel that when we're, when we're here and we're just inside of our shoulders, or when we really push through and extend through that side body. Taking a strong bend in the knees and allow them drop to the mat, bringing you back into your tabletop position. Inhale into your cat, or I'm sorry, cow. And exhale into your cat. Slow with breath here. We'll do three more cycles. Really focusing on rounding out that spine. Rolling the shoulders back in your cow. And on your final exhale, coming back to your neutral spine, we're going to shift our hips over to one side, bringing our feet back in front of us for Dandasana. Sitting up nice and tall here. Inhale, bring the knees into the chest. Exhale, allow the back to roll onto your mat. And let's just rock and roll a couple times here, releasing any of that tension in your spine. I can really never really get enough of this. It feels so nice. It's kind of fun. It's silly. We'll take one more rock and roll here. And then on your last exhale, just allow the upper body to lie restful here on your mat. Inhale, squeeze those knees into your chest and sort of sway from side to side. Just relaxing that low back. Getting a nice tailbone massage. Let's take our Knees in giant circles, rolling out that tailbone. Adding some nice compression here in the hips. Let's take our circles the other way. Just a couple of cycles. Really rolling that tailbone into the mat. And on your next inhale, let's take our knees out wide. Opening the hip space. Rolling out any of those toxins and tension that we might be holding. And on your next inhale, pushing through the heels and grabbing the big toes with your first two finger and thumb. As you exhale, bend those knees out to the side body and swaying from side to side. Taking a couple of breaths here. And just becoming aware of any work we might be doing that we don't need to be. And letting that go. On your next inhale, we'll bring the soles of the feet to touch. As you exhale, allow the ankles to drop towards the mat. Finding a reclined butterfly position. So let's settle in here, tucking in the tail so the low back is flat on our mat. Allow the knees to drop open. So if you need to extend the heels down or feel, feels better pulling the heels closer towards your pelvic region. Placing the palms on your hip creases so the elbows can just drop out towards the floor. Restful, no tension here. And as you exhale, feel the shoulders drop back and sink heavy into your mat. So really restful here, really focusing on different parts of the body to release. Take two more cycles of breath here. Maybe close your eyes. Just feel the body release. You can stay here in your reclined butterfly position or you can extend the legs all the way out, allowing the feet to drop open and the palms up towards the sky for final Shavasana. I'll give you a moment to find your favorite uh, restful position. This could be child's pose. This could be downward dog if we're wanting to stay engaged. Um, full corpse or again you can stay there in your reclined butterfly position. 
Taking a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, bring your focus to the toes. We're gonna to start by relaxing the toes, relaxing the ankles, allowing the feet to drop open. As you exhale, relieving any tension in the knees, allowing the hips to sink heavy and deeper into your mat. With each exhale, feeling the back of the body, the ribs sinking heavier and deeper into your mat. Relaxing the fingers, the wrists, palms up so we're not gripping. Maybe taking a micro bend in each elbow. As you exhale, releasing any tension in the shoulders, maybe rolling them back slightly, tucking them in. Relaxing the neck, the jaw, the tongue, and the eyebrows. Taking a nice deep breath here. And as you exhale, bringing your body into a full relaxation, letting it all go. I'm going to bring your awareness away from your body and back to your breath. Just focusing on that beautiful sound of the ocean waves in and out through the nose, lengthening our breath, calming our hearts, calming our minds, releasing our stress and tension restoring our bodies after our practice. Taking a moment here to definitely honor yourself. These practices are such a deep form of self-care. And so truly give yourself gratitude, not just for the practice, but for even just showing up, for getting on your mat each time. It takes commitment and that's, that's providing. So honor yourself for that. Honoring the practice. Maybe even setting an intention for yourself here. If you're an intention practitioner. We're going to take a few more breaths just to restore here in this peaceful state. Again, focusing on our breath in and out through the nose. Inhaling peace, serenity, restoration. And exhaling to release or to relax. <laughs> Allowing our bodies to sink heavy into our mat for a few more cycles of breath here, honoring this time and space. Just let it go. No thoughts required. Just feeling. And as we've been growing heavier and more restful here in our Shavasana, I'm going to start to bring our awareness away from our bodies and, or I'm sorry, away from our breath and back to our bodies. So as you inhale, start to wiggle the toes and rolling the ankles, maybe shifting the heels from side to side taking a micro bend in each knee and shifting the hips from side to side. Inhale, bringing life back into the lower body. As you inhale, feeling the chest lift from your mat, wiggling the fingers, rolling the wrists and taking a micro bend in each elbow, turning the head from side to side. And on your next inhale, taking arms overhead for a full body stretch, head to toe, nice and strong here. And as you exhale to release, turning over to one side in your fetal position. Take a couple breaths here. So we're slowly coming out of this peaceful state, keeping our minds, our bodies, our hearts calm with our breath. And whenever you're ready, pushing off the top arm and coming back to your easy seated position. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it as I did. The light within me honors the light within you. As in all things, we are one. Namaste.